James Renners once again drops a bombshell. Not that he's claiming this individual is Maura Murray, but he's providing information that someone claiming to be Maura Murray. He's not saying it is, but someone claiming to be is contacting him. And is that because he said if he ever got definitive proof from Maura that she was alive and well, that he would shut down his blog completely and stop looking for her? So there's a whole bunch of different variables at play here. We will be going over them in typical Mindshock fashion, as well as latest developments regarding Loon Mountain. As always, if you enjoy the podcast and you want to support the podcast, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you allow our device to have those notifications come through so you can be notified whenever the latest mind-shocking episodes drop in various true crime cases as well as many other topics. You can like and share this podcast across social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Patrons do get priority for case topic, logical analysis, co-podcast requests. You could also be a guest on the podcast, depending on your tier. So keep the awareness up in this case, cold cases, missing persons cases, they get solved by awareness. Now, the Murray Murray case might be curious for another reason, because... The more awareness that's brought, it seems that a certain circle of trolls, some might be affiliated with each other, some not, have made a concerted effort to muddy the waters in every which way regarding this case. And on Mindshock, we attempt to unmuddy the waters using logic and reason, of course, not faith and fallacy which is all the steer crowd has, as well as this circle of trolls. Very easy to identify. They're either that bereft of logic and reason and don't have the mental capacity to even understand first grade English, or they're just playing stupid, and it can be hard to tell. And motivations, of course, could be across the spectrum. We will be diving deep now into... James Renner's post on his blog, September 7th, 2021, my interview with Maura Murray, in quotations, Maura Murray. On Sunday, August 15th, 2021, at 4.43 p.m., I received the following message from the email fsm.sb at protonmail.com. Dear James... I've written to you a few times. You have never responded. I have told you I found Maura Murray some years ago, no longer her name. After making sure it was her, we talked for a while. I've never bothered her again since in person. I have sent a few emails through our Proton accounts. Her biggest wish is to be left alone. She made mistakes, some serious ones. She ran. Mora speaks fluent French, and she still drinks cherry coke through a red licorice straw. Paragraph concerning specific motive removed. So James has removed this. I don't know if this is for law enforcement or just to prevent further speculation in a particular direction online which might compromise a case who knows let sleeping dogs lie james you won't find her it took me five years of searching to track her down looking in the places you ignored signed capital m and it's curious, because because Renner did go up to Canada looking for her. He was down in Florida. I mean, Renner went to quite a few places searching for her. So it's curious what, what ignored means. That means there was notification, and it wasn't followed up on. So now James Renner's post here. At first, I believe this was a, certainly a troll. Out to cause more confusion and chaos. More guerrilla ontology, possibly. Over the last year, a troll using a Proton Mail account has been harassing those close to Maura Murray's case, going so far as to send pictures of Maggie Freeling with her head decapitated and threatening the life of prosecutor Jeffrey Strelzen. 
And I actually did not go over this before. It's also curious, why was Art Roderick left out of the loop here? Because Maggie might actually be genuine in, uh, in the farce that was The Oxygen Show. She might have actually believed all of the gaslighting of Art Roderick. But Art Roderick, it's hard to believe that he's that silly. If you haven't checked out the body language and micro-expression analysis of Art and Maggie, you can check that out. I did two episodes on that. I think, I'll pro I, think I have one left to do as well from that Q&A session where Art's steering was <laughs> probably the most obvious thing to anyone with a working brain. But anyway, here is a post by James Renner, August 4th, 2021, Department of Homeland Security is now investigating trolls in the Marmar case. You simply can't threaten the life of a prosecutor in the U.S. and think you'll get away with it, but that's exactly what a brazen troll has done over the last few months. Someone using proton mail to master identity has sent death threats to several people connected in the Marmar case, including New Hampshire assistant AG Jeffrey Strelzen and journalist Maggie Freeling. But the vast majority of these messages are personally directed to an obscure podcaster from Canada whose show Armchair Detective focuses on the Mormon case. This individual then replies to these emails, CCing Strelzen, Maggie, myself, and a dozen others. This individual believes these messages are coming from Folk, but it's possible these messages are from someone else impersonating Folk. These messages sometimes include death threats and pornography. The whole thing is just a crazy mess, but Department Secu but Homeland Security is reportedly now involved and may have the means to subpoena data from Proton, from Proton Mail itself. And of course, there's a long list of issues there because they could subpoena whatever they want. Uh, Proton Mail, based in Switzerland, has no obligation to obey American laws or anything associated with American laws. For the moment, they're questioning those at the center of the mystery. Local Massachusetts police contacted Folk last week. Uh, and Renner has reported that he has decided to speak to police. Now, I don't really want to get into Folk because this guy, I don't know if he's got a mental disability. It's a combination of mental disability, uh, some kind of mental disease, plus some kind of just extreme narcissism that he can't even comprehend being pointed out because of the disabilities. So... In the very few encounters I've had with him, the, the processing just wasn't there even for basic children's level English. So I don't, I mean, and nobody really seems to ever get anywhere discussing anything with him anyway. Unless he's some master super genius playing stupid so well, just to such an extent. I mean, maybe that's the case too, but just from a distance, it's almost like someone who's a guilty party inserts themselves into the case. The rumors online is that he actually dated Sarah Alfieri at one point, who is, of course, one of the individuals linked to Maura Murray's last known whereabouts, supposedly at the Saturday night party. And also Sarah Alfieri worked with Maura Murray at the art gallery. And I don't know if it's been 100% definitively verified if she worked that particular Sunday. And that's when she got her phone back that she left at the party. I mean, this is all speculation. Uh, and make of that what you will regarding the Sarah Alfieri connection with Folk. I mean, again, due to mental disability or whatever, he seems to flip-flop on a lot of issues as well. So getting a straight answer about anything is pretty much impossible. And then if it's a combination of mental illness, mental disability, and some kind of weird desire to troll or, or do whatever or just attention seeking and inserting oneself into the case now if there weren't all these exhibitions of mental disability it would seem like it was just someone who wanted to insert themselves into the case that had some kind of connection possibly he knows a lot more than he's saying which is why all of this steering is intentionally designed to go away from umass he's one of the steerers and goofs who gets incredibly triggered any time the notion that Maura Murray can't be on the scene is brought up. That seems to be a pattern with the DC circle of trolls as well as other cir circle of trolls and steers. So again, that could just be coincidental because people without mental, you know, people with mental disabilities might not understand Investigation 101. They might not understand how burden of proof works, the difference between assumptions and facts, or all these people can be playing stupid, or not to fall for that black and white logical fallacy, some of them might be intentionally steering and playing stupid, some of them might actually have mental disabilities. So 
difficult to uh, dissect all that information. And then Armchair Detective himself, this is someone who has, in, in my opinion, just based on certain writings, he doesn't. He seems actually quite intelligent and not to have mental disabilities. So this is someone who could be an intentional troller steer. I haven't really talked about Armchair. There were some interesting points he made like a while ago, years ago, uh, regarding a few different theories. I think he's also flip flopped on many issues. And but this is someone who might actually have a mental con mental condition as opposed to a learning disability because he clearly seems to be intelligent, but he also seems to just randomly want to go on tirades against ev pretty much every everybody involved in the case researching the case for no unprovoked for no reason at all so this is what could be a different this is a difference between someone with mental issues like possibly armchair and someone with a mental disability like Falk who can't comprehend basic points so this case has it all online I don't want to go too far into that, just the aside there regarding James Renner and uh, the Department of Homeland Security now being involved to some capacity. Okay, so this was James Renner's response here. If this is real, give me some piece I can verify or a photo or something. Otherwise, I have to assume this is a troll I wrote back. I received a reply quick. The night Mora vanished, there was a very short call. This was a mistake. The person calling was supposed to call the other number. He came up from Boston using 93, called from near Concord. The reason people don't get which way she went is they presume she went toward the bus driver's house. The car that picked her up was coming from the other direction on 112. They went back the way more it came, then headed off onto the main highway, 91, via 302 North. Everyone presumes she went in the direction her car was pointing. She didn't. She ran a very short ways towards the bus driver's house because the red SUV stopped short of her car. That's it. I'm kind of pleased you think this is a troll. I also believe that if something doesn't fit into your way of thinking, you discount it. You're your own worst enemy. Signed, M, capital M. So, couple interesting points there. We, I don't know if we discussed that before, but that is quite astute. So again, this is a point away from Falk because this requires some <laughs> this requires some kind of mental wherewithal to realize that humans can make mistakes. If someone was trying to contact Mora on her burner phone, but they also had her other number and they accidentally got called a real number. Now this is obviously independent of whether or not Maura Murray was with either phone. Because if she never left the UMass area and someone's just going up to dump the vehicle, which is, I mean, happens all the time in, in stage disappearances where people are harmed. Again, <laughs> those without even a basic, basic mental capacity for some reason find that outlandish it's like they've never studied any true crime case ever it's really weird or they're just playing stupid either way regardless of more, whether mora was with the phone if someone made a mistake and they were supposed to contact her on the on the burner phone or a second phone and they called this one instead is this the point where mora realized or whoever had mora's phone whether mora herself or someone else is this when they chucked the phone or destroyed the phone Whatever the case may be. And there were there's just no more phone data after that mistaken call to her actual phone instead of the burner phone. Now the other issue with the email here, which direction was her car pointed? Because there were numerous accounts, all different accounts of the vehicle pointing the opposite direction. Uh, there were, I believe, up to four distinct locations reported by neighbors or other individuals or reports or newspaper articles. So that is strange because do we really know which way the car was pointing? Or was it moved several times in the, if the staging was botched and the car was unreliable or the tow left the, I mean, who knows what the case was. That's another issue there. And then also instead of truck, this individual says red SUV. Curious, curious, not reg not SUV, but red SUV. And some people do use SUV interchangeably with truck, 
but again, there it's it's so it is difficult to say because it can be used interchangeably. I don't know if that area is notorious or wherever this individual claiming to be M. And what's curious too is they're talking if this is M, she's talking about herself in the third person, or if this is a troll, whatever. They're claiming to be Mora, but they're also refer referring to Mora in the third person at this juncture. So let's continue here. And they're also referring to Butch as bus driver. Refusing to even know his name. What does that mean? So James Renner here continuing in his post. I replied, you still haven't given me anything that can't be found in the papers online. Give me one thing that's not known. The next message contained a narrative about how Mora disappeared and who helped her. The story that developed began with the claim that Mora had been driving her car during a break from work Thursday night and hit Patrit Vassi while on the phone with someone. That person told her to keep driving. When they learned Vassi was in a coma, a conspiracy began to take the car to New Hampshire and stage a small accident so that the car could be fixed up there, away from UMass police looking for a vehicle with front end damage. And again, this might not have included Maura Murray going up to New Hampshire. Still, there was nothing yet that could not be found online, so I kept pushing for more specific info that only Maura might know. What did Sharon Roush mean when she said Joseph was comforted by Harry on the other side of Shredded Navy, I asked. This was a reference to a strange riddle that Sharon Roush once put in an article when asked what she'd say to Maura if she was still alive. P.S. Thought that you would want to know Joseph is comforted with Harry on the opposite side of Shredded Navy. I know you get it. Smiley face. Joseph, we later learned, was a stuffed monkey that Mora had received as a gift. M replied, because they slept in blue tissue paper side by side, Joseph in that text wasn't the pet. It was Bill. Harry was comforting Bill. That's all you're getting. But usually Joseph and Harry slept side by side in blue tissue paper. It was shredded by the monkeys after being put in large pieces. I will say one more thing. Although the monkeys weren't real, they were. It was role play of them having babies together. Joseph was Bill's boy and Bill in a way to Mora and him. It's complicated. So is this a troll just sp just trying to come up with random nonsense to sound semi-legitimate? But I'm actually, the, the adding it's complicated there, it's weird because there are stories, again, I'm just flashing back to personal experiences, people giving stories regarding their significant other or someone with whom there's a conflicted relationship, both positive and negative feelings, they do use the word complicated a lot, and they often speak in these long-winded, convoluted terms and finish with it's complicated when the stories are legitimate, or at least partially legitimate. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm not saying this is, this is more Murray, of course, either, but it's... Again, M is replying all these things still in the third person. Also, referring to Billy not as Billy, but Bill. What does that mean? Did Mora call Billy Bill most of the time, or Billy? Or a mixture of both, depending on whether she was pissed at him. I don't know. James Renner's post continues here. I kept pushing for more info. M then told a story about something that allegedly happened to Bill Roush in 2002 that only family would know. By this time, it became apparent to me that the person using the email account was trying to suggest that they were, in fact, Maura Murray herself. And I began sharing the emails with law enforcement in New Hampshire. I also wonder about that call to the child counselor in Weymouth, I wrote. In the days leading up to her disappearance, Maura placed a call to the home of a woman who investigated child abuse in Massachusetts. Of course, the coincidence theorists maintain that's all coincidence. M replied, You must be confused. It was Maryland the original call was made to. The rest I don't want to talk about. You know why. 
Uh, I'm not sure if this is in reference to the deleted paragraph from the previous email, or if M is now alleging that James Renner knows why, irrespective of this communication. And James Renner replied, what's in Maryland? M, it doesn't matter. You've obviously only got some, if any, of the story. I have a question for you. Are you in love with Mora? Why won't you let her go? And now this is where it looks like it's devolving into a troll job, because if it was Maura Murray, would she ask that question? I mean, I don't know. Or And still in the third person? Or is this someone trying to make James look bad? Place, again, regarding the search, places you ignore. They seem to be pissed at James Renner in some way. Are these just little clues that uh, this is just someone wasting James Renner's time because James Renner triggers this circle of steers and trolls or possibly just random individuals who hate James Renner. Renner responded here, I feel a responsibility to cover the stories of the other victims that came out of this story. The people Bill attacked, the people Wall threatened, the people Aaron victimized. If I knew Mora was alive and well, I'd take the website down. She wouldn't get in trouble, and man, I'd love to hear her story. Am responded, the victims that came out of the story, although they have my sympathy, the people involved would have found another avenue to perpetrate their wills and ways on. Huh, that's weird. What does that mean? So that's not outright discounting the victims, Aaron Larkin style. It's basically saying that James, it's mostly just all personal to James Renner, whereas if he didn't exist, they would have found another way to perpetuate, perpetrate their wills. I'm not sure they would have, because before James Renner came along, it seemed like, other than that one police report that Aaron Larkin denied existed, they weren't saying boo to anybody about anything because they thought nobody cared. James Renner was the one that came out and got them to share their story. So that doesn't look like it's true that they would have came out anyway. James Renner responded, let me get a lawyer to help you. M, I can't, Mr. Renner. I know I won't be charged for the Vassy thing. As the statute of limitations has passed, and I was never a suspect or charged. So this is the first one where it looks like M is switching to first person. So that's curious. Now this email is, I can't, Mr. Renner. And again, why put the Mr. in front of Renner? Hmm. Because it starts with Dear James, not Dear Mr. Renner. So this is a switch from the slightly le from the less former Dear James, not even Dear James Renner. Dear James, now all of a sudden it's Mr. Renner. Does this point to more than one individual writing these emails? Is this really the circle of trolls? And there's more than one troll writing different emails here, and that's why we're seeing different things. But either way, let's continue here. I can't, Mr. Renner. I know I won't be charged for the Vassy thing. Calling hit and run a thing. Curious as well. As the st or And even using Vassy's first name, a lot of times guilty parties, if they feel guilt, they won't use the first name. They would have phrased it, I know I won't be charged for the hit and run. It's curious phrasing here. For the Vassy thing? Weird. As the statute of limitations has passed and I was never a suspect or charged, what can change my life upside down is having to leave the country I call home now. In April 2024, I have to renew my ID. The system has changed somewhat. I won't be able to fool it anymore. I'm panicking, to be honest. People want me found, people don't want me found, some want me found for their own fame. I just want to be left to enjoy the life I have. Please, Mr. Renner, stop looking, dot, dot, dot. Now, this is one of the most problematic aspects of these exchanges. Why, if this really was Maura Murray, why would they reveal a supposedly arbitrary month and, month and year here? April 2024, there's, there's an ID renewal. And this individual feels, or wants everybody to know, they, they feel that they won't be able to fool it anymore. I'm panicking, to be honest. That panicking that they have nothing better to do than to email James Renner? I mean, I don't know. 
uh, or, and this individual might not be the same individual sending all of these emails. Again, if this is the circle of DC trolls exercising this and wasting Renner's time and, and causing more diversion and, and mayhem, as is their MO throughout the years on social media, it's curious phrasing. It seems like that would not be something that would be volunteered if it is Maura Murray, unless one wants to allege if this really is Maura Murray. Or it's possible, let's say more. this is Maura Murray's new boyfriend or husband. He wrote this for her, and then she saw that she caught him doing it, and then now she's writing herself. So all of the emails are honest. Is that a possibility? Again, this is mind check, where the only thing we know for sure is that we don't know anything for sure. Also, if, yeah, it just, it's, it's weird, because if it is a different person, troll or not, if it's a separate troll that's, making up random details like an April 2024 ID change. It's just, it's weird. I mean, maybe say the year, may probably not. Why even reference the ID needs to be changed at all? It just, it doesn't really make sense to add that detail. That's more something, Some that's more like someone who's lying is just throwing in random things to make it look like they're not lying. Or possibly some kind of mental condition or possibly if it is more Murray, maybe she's drunk at this time and she's not thinking clearly. Obviously, anybody drunk posting on social media, there are things that don't make sense and details revealed that normally wouldn't be shared in a sober state. Okay, James Renner responded here, I really want to believe. Can you tell me where you stayed the night you disappeared? M responds, Newport, Vermont. Semicolon. I want to know what you think of me, semicolon. Do you think I am a sociopath? The sociopath comment could also be just yet another dig at Renner because early on in the case he did state that he thought Moore was a sociopath. He has since revised his view on that opinion. But again, it's just really difficult to think that this isn't a troll job. If it's Mora, it does not seem like anybody sober would be concerned with this. Renner responds, if this is Mora, I would say no. I think she's a survivor. And I guess Renner's saying there, if he's talking to a troll here, the troll may very well be a sociopath if they're impersonating Mora. M responds, I'm not a survivor. I did it with blind luck and meeting the right people at the right time. The start off money helped me a lot and bought my new name. The rest is just learning from mistakes and listening to conversations. So it just doesn't make sense to just continue on and on with these emails. Unless it's a troll who loves the attention and just stringing James Renner along. Renner responds, can you tell me how the Vasty thing went down? M responds, I went for a break or more to speak with three asterisks. I was on the cell phone, four asterisks. I had been crying when I wasn't paying attention, and next thing he's there. He hit the front of the car, went over the hood, and kind of bounced on it. Then as I hit the brakes, he fell to the ground to the right. It was terrifying. Four asterisks screamed at me to carry on driving. I was in shock. It took a while for it to sink in. Four asterisks ended the call because he didn't want to be involved. That's it. I sat shaking at work with my thoughts about what had happened, so I finally broke down and was taken back to my dorm by my supervisor. Curious. Curious. So if this was Bill that she was on the phone with, and he told her to keep going, that, that would be kind of crazy. And then he just abandoned her in her time of need. And to the goofs that say there was no time for her to go on break, I mean, people who have worked there clearly stated there were back doors. Uh, people went on breaks all the time. I mean, it's just, again, whoever wasn't there, they can't really say one way or the other. But the coincidence theorist crowd who just denies any possibility that Mora or someone else could have taken the Saturn and hit Patrice Vassy, it's just it's really, really strange. <laughs> I mean, just not a lot of cognitive function by that, uh, that Dunning-Kruger crowd that maintains it's impossible. Also notice there are no mentions to the pizza place here or her calls to Domino's, all these things. 
if it was really more she was involved in some CI situation, would she at least spend some time saying, oh, it's really funny. There's people out there that think this was a CI situation. I mean, if it was really her, it seems there might be some kind of reference to that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, but... Or these are just trolls that, if the, if these are, if this is the DC circle of trolls that don't want anybody investigating that aspect of it, of course they would never call attention to that in, in these fake emails. If they are fake. Morris, uh, this James Renner continues here, I then asked this person if they could name one of the young men involved in the group sex party that took place at the UMass pool house. One of the men there was investigated as a possible suspect for a time. I have never released the names of the men involved. The person responded with the first name of one of the men. A lucky guess, question mark, perhaps. Okay. So here's here's a couple things. So would Erin Larkin know the name of these guys if she had talked to them? So if she's the party responsible, if there's some guerrilla ontology going on regarding this email, and for those that haven't listened to the podcast regarding Erin Larkin and guerrilla ontology itself from the book The Illuminati Papers, and the whole field of guerrilla ontology being invented by that author in order to sow mayhem and cognitive dissonance specifically for people to question what is real, what is a put-on, and just all of this nonsense, which, of course, Erin Larkin is responsible for. So she has, she's lived up to her guerrilla ontologist's name. Also, if she actually personally knew the guys... If Falk really did date Sarah Alfieri and she knew one of these guys, they could they could know his name for real. It didn't have to be a guess. Now, by him saying perhaps it's a guess, does that mean the name is a semi-popular name? Like John, Jack, Will, whatever. One of these popular names that could be guessed. If it's a, if it's a more unique name, like Ezekiel or something, then would... If she guessed that, I mean, that that would be a lot more curious. That might not be written off as a guess. So I'm guessing he had a, reg a relatively common first name in order for Renner to phrase it as perhaps it was a lucky guess. He should have asked for all three. Or does Renner not even know? I don't know. Did they talk to him under anonymity? Does Renner not know all three guys? Should have asked for all three with descriptions of them. But what's weird, the, the anti-Renner crowd would say, why would Renner even bother with, like, why did he want to use this as the metric? So is he trying to, if he's trying to basically throw shade at Maura Murray by trying to say that she really was at that party, although if she knew the guys at the party, that doesn't mean she participated. She just knew that the party was real and the guys were there. So it doesn't necessarily paint her in a bad light to have knowledge of this, particularly if it was one of her friends who told her about it or whatever the case may be. That doesn't mean she, just because she knew about it doesn't mean she participated in it, but I don't know. Rena responds here, would you consider meeting? M responds, sorry, at this time, no, but if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd be talking to the man who believes I'm a sociopath. I'd have said no. Wait, what? And then so, dot, dot, dot. Let me read that again. Sorry, at this time, no. But if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd be talking to the man who believes I'm a sociopath, I'd have said no. So she's saying she, she this individual claimed to be more Murray. Is, it would be no both times. So she says, no, the man that's saying that she's not a sociopath, but also I'd have said no to the man a year ago. <laughs> now this is devolving into some really weird phrasing. I mean, I don't know. The conversation eventually came to an end after this person said they were told by a friend to end it. And if this was really more, she has nothing better to do than to converse with James Renner. I mean, it's just really weird. Uh, I mean, initially, like, that very first email or two, that kind of sort of possibly might make sense. But all these follow-up emails don't really make a lot of sense. M, this is, okay, so M said this, All the money in the world couldn't change my life back to what it was inside the family I had. The good thing about being where I've been for so long is how forward-thinking 
people r slash were bitcoin has been very kind to many of us here from the beginning i live close not literally to some of the biggest crypto mining organizations in the world i have all i need the only worry i have is 2024 i really need to go now mr renner I hope I've cleared your head a little and solved some of the mysteries that have bothered you for so long. Sorry it couldn't have been more dramatic. Okay, that's yet another red flag. Not that random females are not involved in crypto or crypto mining, but just the way this is being referenced to, it wasn't just a simple Bitcoin name drop. Okay, people were invested in Bitcoin. Or is this more something along the lines? Is this more of a 12 tribe situation and she's alleging that these people that helped her were forward thinking? Did the 12 tribes invest in Bitcoin? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This is just, it's almost like it, that was thrown in there for the, uh, the pop culture value reference on, on what's being talked about now. It's weird. And then also, why is she specifically saying she's living next to some of the largest crypto mining organizations in the world? Not just one, some of the biggest crypto mining are organizations, plural, in the world. Is she setting him up on a wild goose chase to go again and also add there? The only worry I have is 2024 with the crypto mining. It's, it's as if it's set up to get people going on wild goose chases. Renner responds here, there's a lot more in these conversations that I am not sharing publicly. They went on at a great length about how Mora left and why, including who she was running from. But if they are true, they should remain private. And if this is another hoax, the people involved should not be disparaged. I've heard from New Hampshire prosecutors several times since sharing these emails. They are actively trying to find the sender of those messages. They asked me to hold off publishing for a couple of weeks so that this person was not alerted to what they're doing behind the scenes. Unfortunately, Julie Murray made it public last Friday. Now, this is where things get really, really strange because is it more important to Julie Murray and all these other people that James Renner looks bad than actually solving the case or preserving the integrity of a case. It, it just doesn't make any sense. The behavior of all of these individuals does not make any sense. Why would Julie Murray make this information public? And that's the only reason James Renner came out about it at all. So to all the goofs out there that think James Renner is just an attention-seeking individual who wants to make money and fame off anything, I mean, he clearly did not publish this information until Julie Murray already made it known that this was going on. It just, it, it doesn't make any sense. And of course, James Renner himself vindicated at every turn, even with the initial victims that Aaron Larkin was denying the existence of, the grand juries, that there would ever be any kind of prosecution against Bill Roush or any kind of court case, any kind of course would even make, any kind of case would even make it to court. They should have made Aaron Larkin read her own comments about that while Aaron Larkin was in court for, as a witness for Bill Roush. None of this makes any sense. It's really weird. Looking back through a conversation, I noted that M said she'd written me before and that one other person had found her already. So here's this excerpt here. One person did find me back in 2012. He just walked up to me and said, Hello, Mora. We talked for a while and he promised to leave me be. He was a British guy, ex-intelligence or something. He'd been looking for me for only three months, told me he tried talking to you, but you ignored him in the beginning, so he went it alone. He was a decent guy and kept his word as far as I know. I did move just in case. Curious, curious indeed. And Renner continues the post here. So I dove back through my old emails. The first thing I found was a message from M that came in through my Global Leaks secure tips account. So that part checked out. Then I found this email from Dr. Wayne Miller from November 13, 2013, which if all of this is true, may be what they were talking about. Dr. Miller is not British, but he might have sounded proper in person or on the phone. Attention, James Renner. Hope this website still works. I am a national cold case missing... I am, colon, national cold case missing persons on the internet. I am, colon, 
also an NJ licensed PI. I have been quietly working on Mora's case and in fact spoke to a person who said she was Mora in very plain, clear English on March 11, 2011. On 3-11-11. She said she had been a nursing student at U, at U of Mass. She quickly caught on that I was perhaps a PI on her trail and hung up. I placed my phone call to a Sherbrooke, Canada address that I have. The phone was disconnected the next day. A lot of curiosities there, but why would why would Mora admit she was a nursing student at U of Mass? Or because even if he just called and didn't want to get her name, and he said, "Oh, I was just calling people in Sherbrooke, Canada, to see how many nursing students there were at the University of Massachusetts," why would she admit that? Like this story doesn't make a lot of sense at all. Unless, and again, I'm not, I'm not even alleging Mora is or is not alive. Perhaps if there's some kind of a drinking problem, inhibitions are impaired and she might admit to things she wouldn't admit when sober. And most of these emails were taking place while drunk. Again, I'm not alleging this is what happened. Obviously, it seems like most of this is all trolling. But there, I also do remember even a random comment on a YouTube video. I don't remember which one. This was years ago. Someone who said they did find Mora. They just walked up to her and said, Hello, Mora. And her face was just shocked. And then they walked away. So there are people who claim to have done that to Mora. I don't know. I don't know. And Sherbrooke has come up multiple times. There are multiple sightings in Sherbrooke, Canada. People mostly dismiss them. But, but the thing is, Renner didn't ignore that. He went up with Tim and Lance looking for her so it's it's weird how she how this troll is saying or or if it is more i get could she not know that 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 renner actually did go up and look for her in sherbrooke or something i don't know renner's post continues here as you may know there have been sightings of someone who looks like maura murray connected to sherbrooke canada for years here's the thing that email came in just as i was switching email accounts and i had been organizing messages into different folders I apparently parked that email in the Maura Murray folder and never replied, so that bit checked out too. Unfortunately, Dr. Miller died earlier this year. The Proton Mail account has since been deleted. We are working to identify the source, says Prosecutor Jeffrey Strelzen. And Strelzen really seems like a guy who gets stuff done. So we'll probably be waiting with bated breath because he'll probably shortly announce who it belonged to. Look, I know how this sounds, and I agree this was most likely a troll. I mean, take a look at what all they've all been up to in the past year. <laughs> if this is more Murray, I would implore her to make contact through an attorney who can keep your name and location confidential while still providing proof of life to authorities. Because whether this is a troll or not, law enforcement is currently doing everything they can to identify the sender, and this time I believe they will. Uh, some of the responses here, I wonder if a lot of her answers were written in French first, then translated by some translation site because the English is very off. It seems as if that the person who was emailing did not learn English as a first language. Someone else posted that 2024 immigration changes don't sound like Canada. It sounds like she's in England instead. If the French speaking part is true, then Southeast is more likely. Fits with the Bitcoin angle too. Another response. So I live in Canada. I'm trying to figure out what is happening in 2024 con concerning IDs. Nothing found thus far. Maybe more digital IDs. But here in Ontario and other provinces, you can go up to 10 years without having to renew your driver's license and health cards in person. It needs to be renewed every five years, but if you got your picture taken five years prior, you can renew online and no new picture taken. But at the second renew, it needs to be done in person. Maura Murray could have got good ID in 2004 through a special underground service. Whether it be a women's group or even the black market, lots of biker gangs in Quebec, Ontario, etc. That deal in these exact things. So continuing 2004 to 2014 is a 10 year gap. Renew or new ID in 2014 to 2024 time to renew and do the whole thing over again 20th anniversary but what's weird is couldn't she just use her previous documents to renew because of the previous documents and just show up because if she has some kind of work documents proving her address or whatever bills she's paying 
plus her previous photo ID, plus a different photo ID that she had, even if she does need to go in person to renew, unless there's a new requirement for birth certificate or whatever, but if she got a fake one the previous time around, oh, okay, so if it wasn't a good fake, <laughs> is that what, what people are thinking? That she's not confident? Because in two, what, what passed in 2004 wouldn't pass if she needs those original documents again in 2024. That's a possibility, I guess. But why would she specifically say April? Actually, that is curious, because if she went missing in February and it took her two months to get new documents while she was hiding, that could make sense as well. And just a quick reminder, Quebec is not the only French-speaking place in Eastern Canada. Ontario is the next biggest. Places like Ottawa, Cornwall, Brockville, Kingston, Belleville all have a large amount of French-speaking and lots of cash jobs along the 401. Also the Maritimes, New Brunswick, and S. Canada is very welcoming. People, for the most part, will open their homes for someone who needs help, especially a woman running from something. Another place that would be very easy for her to go is First Nation Reserves. They would sympathize with a woman who is on the run from evil, big time. Easy to work cash jobs on the reserves without the government breathing down your back, and the people would be very protective of her. Just throwing some things out there, I will look more into what is happening in 2024 in terms of ID, if anything, or it could be as simple as renewal time. These emails seem quite more than a troll. It feels different in my opinion. Okay, so that was BW who made that comment. And the First Nation Reserves also is interesting. It seems more likely that uh, some Native Americans, some tech-savvy natives might might have foresaw Bitcoin as opposed to 12 tribes. I don't know, just my opinion. I don't know if, if 12 tribes, maybe maybe a lot of them did get in on Bitcoin. Who knows? But yeah, I don't know. Curious, if she was on reservations, I mean, again, government wouldn't technically have jurisdiction on native land. I don't know exactly how it is in Canada, but in the U.S., they don't have jurisdiction. So it is curious. It is curious. That actually seems like it could be a realistic option for someone to, to go have a new identity and remain uncovered if they did stay on, on the res. So all the possibilities. So let's examine why someone would even want to do this. If Maura Murray was harmed, the responsible parties might want James Renner to shut his site down. So they clearly there's motive there to come up with these troll emails pretending to be Mora. There's some inconsistency even in the emails, references Dear James, then Mr. Renner, then switching from third to first person. I mean, there's just so much weirdness going on with these emails. It's just, it's really hard to take seriously, and there's no major smoking gun. All right, so this, so I asked James Renner directly when, uh, when M in the post it says M mentioned a lot of details about who she was running from, I asked if it was someone other than Bill. And Renner said Bill and others, plural. So that's curious. So it wasn't just Bill Roush. Again, does that go back to the home Mora was running from the men in her life? Not a single individual. Now, again, does that also include a CI angle? Does that include a disgruntled UMPD employee involved in something illicit? Again, the Domino's calls, some drug traffickers probably, possibly. I mean, there are just so many unanswered questions in that regard, but it looks like Mora, if this was legitimate, then Mora, well, regardless of whether the email is legitimate or not, Mora could have been seeking to get away from more than one individual. And would that seem more likely? Because as controlling as Bill seemed, that's still one domino. Now, once more and more dominoes begin to fall, obviously an individual might might uh, get more and more panicked and resolve to do something they wouldn't have done if it was just one person or one issue they had to deal with.